Hello, everybody, and welcome again to another OpenShift Commons briefing. Um, this time, we're really pleased to have um, some of the folks from NGINX with us. Um, Michael Pleshkoff will be talking about, as it says on the screen, load balancing applications on OpenShift. Um, but he's also going to be talking about um, their new NGINX Plus Ingress Controller 2 and how to use that and configure that with OpenShift. And I'm really pleased to have Michael here with us today. So the format is um, ask questions in the chat. We'll have live Q&A at the end. Um, this session is being recorded. So it will be up on um, blog.openshift.com in a couple of days. So you can review it there or look on our YouTube um, uh, playlist as well. So without any further ado, I'm going to let Michael um, introduce himself and take it away. Thanks, Michael. Well, thanks, Diane. Uh, thanks for inviting us. It's a pleasure to be here. So today we will talk about load balancing applications on OpenShift with Nginx and Nginx Plus. Um, here is a little information about me. Uh, my name is Michael Pleshakov, and I work as a platform integration engineer at Nginx, and I'm based in Cambridge, United Kingdom. And here's my email, michael at nginx.com, if somebody would like to connect with me. Here is our agenda for today. So we start with, uh, with a discussion about Nginx and Nginx Plus and why uh, they are relevant for, open, for load balancing on OpenShift. Then we will compare route and ingress resources. So the OpenShift native load balancing resource and the Kubernetes native load balancing resource. Then we will introduce Nginx and Nginx Plus ingress controller and show how to deploy and use the Ingress controller in a live demo. Well, I hope that it sounds good. So let's start. What is Nginx? So as many as of you know, Nginx is an open source reverse proxy, load balancer, content cache as a web server. Uh, from the w 3 text figures from August 2017, Nginx was number one among number one web server among one billion, uh, million busiest top busiest website in the world. It is also number one image on Docker Hub. And why is Nginx is relevant for load balancing on OpenShift? Well, first of all, it is a very high performant load balancer with a low memory usage. It's been, a while, it's been around for, my, uh, for more than a decade, so it, is, so it is stable and very well tested. Support, support for graceful reloads allows you to reconfigure Nginx very often, which is crucial for running uh, for dynamic environments like Kubernetes or OpenShift. It has many advanced features. Uh, for example, SSL termination, advanced content-based routing, authentication and access control to protect your application, as well as connection requests of rate limiting, again, to protect your uh, application from DDoS attacks. Uh, support for HTTP2, as well as many other features, which are very relevant for edge load balancing. Well, another important thing is flexibility. And by that, I mean that you can deploy Nginx or Nginx Plus uh, as an OpenShift application. So you deploy and manage Nginx as a native OpenShift application. What is Nginx Plus? Nginx Plus is our commercial version of the product, which is built on top of Nginx. It comes with several advanced features, active health checks, uh, session persistence, and advanced load balancing methods. Um, those are uh, advanced features for application delivery. Nginx Plus also comes with several APIs. For example, the API for dynamic reconfiguration, the API for getting the various status information, and the key API for the, its built-in key value store. Those are features allow, allow you to easily manage Nginx Plus and also monitor Nginx Plus 
as well the application that you will be on. There are a number of security features. Uh, so one of them is support for authentication of uh, JOT uh, web tokens. Another one is that Nginx Plus supports several web application firewalls. Also, Nginx Plus uh, is supported by, you can get uh, support from Nginx. So there are how to use Nginx or Nginx Plus and OpenShift. And there are two main options. So the first option, which is on the right, is to configure Nginx Plus using its native configuration and also utilize the DNS server discovery to make Nginx Plus discover application endpoints. So this is only available in Nginx Plus with its support for DNS server discovery and SRV records. And you can uh, read more information about this method if you follow the link on your screen. Another option is use Ingress Controller. With Ingress Controller, you configure Nginx or Nginx Plus through a Kubernetes Ingress resource, which is a native Kubernetes resource for creating a load, ba load balancing configuration. And in this case, Nginx Ingress Controller which is a special software that takes care of creating Nginx, configura creating Nginx configuration based on the ingress resources that you deploy. And in this talk, we will, uh, we will learn about using ingress controller. So let's compare ingress resources and routes. Routes are OpenShift native resources, and they appeared in OpenShift long before the Ingress resource would appear in Kubernetes. Route uh, offers uh, several features, such as support for HTTP or HTTPS load balancing and secure, uh, SSL secure TCP load balancing as well. It supports, it supports path based routing as well as uh, SSL termination between the router and the backend applications. Weighted load balancing across many services is also supported. Ingress resource, on the other hand, uh, offers a, uh, a very slightly limited number of features compared to the OpenShift routes. However, what, however users have my, many options with what load balancer that can they can use with Ingress resource. For OpenShift router, there are only two load balancers. It, it is either HAProxy, which is, comes with OpenShift by default, or F5 load balancer. With Ingress resource, uh, there are several Ingress controllers implementations for different load balancers, including Nginx, as many other popular load balancing solutions. Uh, it is worth noting that um, Ingress resource in OpenShift is currently in tech preview. So here we can see on the screen uh, a, route, a route and Ingress resource for particular load balancing requirements. So we have an application with a host name uh, www.example.com and we have one path path based rule so we want the request with the url the url that starts with test we, we want those requests to be load balanced to our service with, the, with uh, the name service name and you can see both route resource and an ingress resource for those requirements and as you can see, they very similar. Um, so as I said, there are my, uh, many options for load balancer with, that support Ingress resource. And uh, you can use Ingress Nginx with Ingress resources. Uh, moreover, there are several or two, two Ingress controllers implementations. 
there is an implementation which is which was developed by R, R uh, by Nginx and community, and there's also an implementation which was developed by Kubernetes community. So you have multiple options. And it was noting that our implementation uh, support Nginx Plus. Uh, so information that I will be talking about uh, in this session will be both relevant for will be relevant for both Nginx and US controllers, either ours controller or the community one. So Nginx ingress controller is deployed in a container. So, so in a container, uh, you you have Nginx as well as ingress controller software. The ingress controller software uh, what, uh, watches Kubernetes API for any deployed ingress resources in the current cluster state. And when the ingress resources change or the cluster state changes, the ingress controller software reconfigures Nginx In our demo, what we will do, we will deploy the Nginx Plus Ingress Controller on OpenShift. We will deploy an example application and configure load balancing for, for this application using Ingress. And then we try to play with the application by scaling it up and down. Okay, so let's open our terminal window. So on my local machine, I have an OpenShift uh, cluster running in a virtual machine. So it is a one node cluster created with Minishift. So what, what we'll, we'll do first is we will deploy Nginx plus Ingress controller. To do that, first we will need to create the service account for our Ingress controller container in the create service account command, we will create the service account and name it Nginx Ingress. It was worth mentioning that uh, currently I logged in um, as a user as an admin. And we, we will deploy the Ingress controller in the default project. So let's, let's create the service account. Ingress controller. Now we will create the role for our Ingress controller. So let's take a look into the, that role. This role allows Ingress controller software to communicate with Kubernetes API. So we explicitly define all the APIs that the software need access, needs access, have access to. Let's create the Ingress role. Great. So now what we will do, we will, uh, once we created the cluster role, we will bind this role to our service accounts in admin policy command. So we add a cluster role to our user, which is our service account. We will add the cluster role in Linux ingress to our service account. So the service account is system service account run default on Nginx ingress. Great. So the last step uh, regarding to permissions is to add another policy.
it will add the privilege policy service account as we have created okay I, I, I made a type assembly here yep great so we added the privilege policy to our nginx ingress service account so this is required for us for three reasons so we need to so nginx um, is, uh, needs to bind to ports a to, to the privileged ports 80 and 443 to the node where it will be deployed uh, so the, sec the second thing is nginx is running as root user inside the container and the third thing it also it nginx ingress controller software writes configuration into the root file system in the container so for those uh, reasons we we added the privileged uh, policy to our ingress nginx ingress service account So, so now, now let's deploy the ingress controller. We, we will create the default. Uh, we will deploy a secret with default SSL certificate and key that is used for the default server in Nginx Plus ingress controller. Great. And now we are ready to deploy the replication controller uh, with the Nginx plus English controller. So let's look into the, this definition file. So we will deploy one replica of the English controller, as you can see, with the service account name that we just created. And so the, the image that you see, Nginx plus English, is already available on, on in this cluster. And we also map the ports 80 and 443 and 8080 to the same ports on the on the OpenShift node. Another typo, but that's okay. So now we can run the get post command and see that our nginx plus container or pod is running so let's try to connect to it so nginx plus comes with a dashboard and this dashboard shows you the uh, metrics the real-time metrics so you can quickly see uh, what's going on in this particular nginx plus uh, instance or container so currently nginx plus is not uh, doesn't is not configured to load balance any ap application so what we see here is a very limited number of metrics but but now that we have deployed the english controller Let's deploy the demo application and configure load balancing for this demo application. So let's go back to our presentation. Uh, we will deploy the cafe application. And this cafe application consists of two services, the coffee service and the tea service. And each service is running in a separate replication controller. And those services are very simple web application. As you will and see. Mikael, can you make that full screen? Uh, yeah. Thanks. Great. Um, and on the uh, right, you, you see the ingress resource for configuring that application. But uh, let's deploy the application first. Um, so, uh, First, we will deploy the replication controller for the coffee service and a service for the coffee service. Okay. And, and while the coffee pods are being created, I just quickly take a look into those files so that you see that 
there's nothing sophisticated here. So in the coffee replication controller, we will, we, with this replication controller, we'll create two replicas of our coffee container from the image nginx demos hello. And we export the container port 80. Is the coffee service. What we have is we just uh, create a service and uh, you select uh, all the coffee pods that we that we cr create with our coffee replication controller and define the service on port 18. So the same port that uh, those uh, web, uh, web, uh, that web application that we're using, the same port that that application uses. Okay. So, mm -hmm. so we see that uh, we get the error. So I will try to delete the replication controller. So the, the error that we can see is because I missed one, one single step. So what, what we will do, so we, uh, currently I'm logged in as an admin. So, but what we will do is we will log in as a developer using the another account developer and deploy our application using the developer account, not the admin account. Um, so let's do this. But but first uh, first we need in currently on OpenShift uh, you need explicitly allow uh, users to work with ingress resources. So we need to create a policy that allows a, us a user to communicate to create the ingress resources, and then we need to bind this policy to the existing user. So let's do this first. Uh, and so we have a policy. It's called admin that we will create and this simple policy we create this cluster role allows us to create uh, uh, allows a user to create and manipulate in your resources so let's create this cluster role and now now we will this policy to the existing user at this role to the existing user. So the user is the name of the user developer and the namespace where this user belongs to is my project. Well, another step that we must uh, perform is that our cafe application, um, our our coffee application, our web application is running as root users, and by default, um, running containers with root users is not allowed on OpenShift. So we must explicitly allow that. Do this. We'll add, um, we will allow them to run. Uh, for our particular user. Mm. We will, so what we're doing is we allow for the for default service account in the project my project, we allow this service account, a container created with this service account to run uh, processes with root users inside. Okay. So now, now we can log in as a developer user and we we are residing inside the my project or my or my project namespace. So now now, now we will create those uh, Now we will create this, those replication controllers and services. So first, we will create the replication controller and the service for our coffee service. Container 
So one container is running and another is running as well. So similarly, we have the replication controller for the uh, T service, the service for the T service. So let's create those. And those files are almost identical to the coffee files. The only difference is uh, the, the name that, that is used. Let's check that the ports are running. Great. So now, now we, we, we deploy the application. And previously, we also deployed the ingress controller. So the last, last missing step is to configure load balancing. So let's go back to our slides. So what we want to have, so we have the application with two services, the coffee service and tea service. So what, what we would like to do is to expose this application through the cafe.example.com DNS name. We want to secure our application so that all requests are secured with, with SSL. And we also would like to define two path-based rules, so, such that requests that start with, uh, with, with uh, the URL that starts with uh, t slash t, those requests will be load balanced to the t service. And request with the URL that starts with slash coffee will be load balanced to the coffee service. So those are the simple requirements. And those requirements can be completely addressed by the by an ingress resource. So the, on the right, you can see the corresponding ingress resource. So here in the this resource in the line four, we give 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 it the name cafe cafe dash ingress. From lines from line six until line nine, we configure SSL termination. So we, we specify that for, for the host cafe.example.com, we need to apply the SSL certificate and key from the secret cafe secret. So so we we will also deploy SSL certificate and a key in a separate resource called secret. Um, and then we have from lines from from line 10 until line 21, we have two path based rules. So first we define the host name for, for our application, the, the, the DNS name for application, cafe.example.com, and then we have two path based rules that I was talking about. Let's deploy our cafe secret. And again, the secret contains the SSL certificate and SSL key. And let's also deploy, finally deploy the ingress resource, cafe ingress. Demo. Great. So let's go to back to our dashboard. As you can see, more information is now available. So if we if we go to the server zone tab, we see that we have deployed one application, cafe.example.com. And if we go to the upstream tabs, we will see the, the containers of that application. So we have here, we have the containers of the T service, three containers. And here we have the containers of the coffee service. So we have two containers. Um, so what we can do is we can also try to access our application. So uh, through the name DNS name cafe.example.com and slash team. And so if we refresh this page, we will see that the response uh, every time comes from a different container. And as I was telling, uh, the web application that we're actually running is very simple. As you can see, it only returns uh, some information about the container where, the, where, where this application is running.
And so we, we hit the slash t URL. And similarly, we can hit the slash coffee URL as well. And we can get responses from the coffee containers. We go back to our dashboard so we can see that uh, the traffic was generated, our request generated some traffic, which is reflected on the dashboard, as you can see. Okay, great. Um, so what we can do now, uh, we can we can try to scale our application. So what we will do is scale the coffee container, uh, coffee containers. So we will scale the coffee replication controller from from two replicas to five. So let's let's do that. Um, so what we will should see here is that those containers are created by Kubernetes, and then they once created, uh, the the endpoints corresponding to those containers are quickly added to nginx, thus by the ingress controller. So um, uh, no, please note that uh, so what what I showed you except for the dashboard, is also available for Nginx open source. It's just that the dashboard allows us to visualize uh, Nginx Plus configuration and get real-time real -time metrics. Uh, however, this one particular difference between Nginx and Nginx Plus, which is used by the Ingress controller. So the endpoints that we, we just added, we can actually scale back to one container okay let's let's try to do that oh now we have one coffee container so uh, such change as changing uh, endpoints can be for nginx plus can be done through the api so it doesn't require changing configuration at all and doing the reload so that uh, as you can see the uptime current uptime is three minutes um but other than um that and few other advanced features, Nginx and Ingress controller for Nginx and Nginx Plus, they work the same way. Um, so let's go back to our presentation. So what we, uh, so let's take a look at, once again at the Ingress resource that we used. And so Ingress resource allows us to configure simple path-based routing, SSL termination, and have multiple applications with different uh, host, host names. However, uh, this is pretty much it. Uh, Ingress, configure, Ingress resource doesn't allow you to do anything else, basically. And uh, as you know, it, a router, uh, router offers few more features. But, uh, however, uh, there are several number of extensions to the Ingress. And those extensions, um, we can use it, use those extensions with Nginx. I'll show you in a moment. So Nginx is an advanced load balancing solution and it provides many configuration options. And those options allow you can allow you to fine tune Nginx behavior, and also allow you to use advanced Nginx, Nginx features. So how do we use those features? How do we fine tune Nginx behavior? So there are two options um, for fine tuning Nginx. On the left, you can see the config map resource. So config map is another Kubernetes or OpenShift resource that you can create. And in the config map on the left, we put um, a key value pairs, basically, where we define uh, various, various Nginx, uh, where, we, where we set values for various Nginx configuration directives. So for example, here we set we configure connection timeouts and 
when nginx for when nginx proxies the, the income requests as well we configure the uh, max, maximum body size for, for a request from a client that is allowed by nginx so nginx ingress controller understand uh, the uh, those key value pairs and when you deploy a config map resource with those uh, pairs nginx ingress controller will configure nginx accordingly and here we only show three um, uh, key value pairs but there are many other options for fine-tuning other nginx behavior um, another option is to to use annotations so annotations is again it's a key value string pairs that you can attach to to any kubernetes or openshift resource including ingress so on the right we have the ingress resource which is similar to the one that we have deployed in our cafe example application and for that configuration we redefined the uh, we redefined the, uh, the values uh, to to different values that we have config that we configure used in the config map so again we configure on the uh, timeouts and client max body size and while the config map allows you to configure uh, such you know parameters globally uh, which means that they will be applied for each ingress resource that you deploy um, uh, using annotations it is possible to redefine those parameters and apply them only for a particular ingress resource okay so the next thing is how how to use advanced nginx features and again some of them are available through annotations and some of them are also available as a config map keys uh, so here on the screen you can see how we can configure uh, uh, jot authentication which is available in nginx plus so we have two annotations and through those two annotations you, you can use and configure that particular feature and for other nginx features for example session persistence or proxy protocol or um, configuring ssl termination uh, configuring ssl between nginx and backend applications we have we have special annotations for that as well also also we have a very powerful set of annotations which is called snippets so snippet annotations allow you to insert nginx configuration native nginx configuration into the generated ingress resource for example if you want to customize nginx or if you want to use some particular nginx feature which is not available through other annotations uh, you can uh, insert the corresponding nginx config uh, you know snippet uh, using the snippet annotations for example here we configure we configure uh, basic http authentication as well as client ssl validation so if you're familiar with nginx configuration uh, we have a uh, so, uh, HTTP context as well as as well as server server block and location blocks. So snippets are available for location and server blocks, and there is a config map key to, to insert snippets into the HTTP block the HTTP context. So the last, uh, the final way you can use advanced features with nginx is to is to do this by simply customizing the templates so ingress control software generates configuration from template 
and you can uh, you can customize the template and change it in a way that makes sense for your requirements. So this is one of the again one of the several options that you can use to configure nginx advanced nginx features. So summarize um, Ingress resource is a Kubernetes way for configuring load balancing, in particular HTTP load balancing. And it's as as we saw, it is easy to use, very straightforward to use. Um, there are several load balancers that you can use with Ingress, and uh, the number of options is greater than for a route resource. However, uh, Ingress resource is slightly limited than OpenShift routes, and it lacks many important features. However, uh, Ingress con controllers support various extensions, and it can be annotations, it can be config map keys, or you can simply customize you know, templates used to generate configuration. And so extensions is one of the powerful feature of Ingress controllers. As for Nginx or Nginx Plus as Ingress controller, so if you want to use Nginx as an Ingress controller, what you get is high performance and stability, flexible deployment, because you deploy Nginx Ingress controller in a container, so you deploy and manage it as an OpenShift application. Um, as you saw, uh, once you, you know, deploy an Ingress resource, the configuration, reconfiguration of Nginx happens very fast. And there are many extensions available that allow, allows you, allow you to use different advanced features available in Nginx. And if you would like to use Nginx Plus as Ingress controller, you will get uh, advanced features available in Nginx, such as real-time metrics, um, session persistence, support for short, uh, dynamic and dynamic configurations, the dynamic configuration, and few others. And uh, when using Ingress controller for Nginx Plus, it is officially supported by Nginx support team. So with that, I conclude my presentation. So here I have a couple of resources that you will find useful. So all the YAML files, as well as Ingress controller, uh, you can download from GitHub by following this link. You can also uh, use, there is an Ingress controller container image available on Docker Hub. So you can use it as well. If you would like to try Nginx Plus, it is easy to get a free trial. Just go on a website and fill out the form. And I mentioned another option for using Nginx on OpenShift. It is to use um, DNS service discovery for discovering application endpoints. So if you follow this link, you will find a blog post which will explain how to use DNS service discovery with Nginx Plus. Cool. Uh, and if you would like to contact me, uh, th there is an email as well. Awesome. Thank thanks, Michael. Um, there's a there's a couple of questions that have come up um, in the chat. Um, the the last one, Paul is asking, how does the traffic flow from Nginx to to the container? From Nginx to the container. So uh, this is a traffic. Uh, between Nginx and application containers, so the traffic is um, connections are established directly. So okay. it's just from Nginx container to the application container directly through the overlay network. Yeah. So Paul, I'm I'm going to unmute you so you can ask the question, your second question directly. If you unmute yourself, because I think it's a little bit more detailed. If you have a microphone, um, 
he's he's asking, are you using SDN or connecting directly via VXLAN? And if um, you want, Paul, you can unmute yourself and, and ask directly. So are you using SDN or connecting via VXLAN? Okay, so it's in, in this case, um, so the Ingress controller uses the same network that is used that that you used that which is used in the OpenShift cluster. So whatever option you will choose for networking between the ports in the cluster, so Nginx Ingress controller will will be connected to the same net network. So it will be the option that you will choose. Yeah, okay. Um, let me just see. He's trying to unmute himself and it's not working. So hang on a half a second. Let me see if I can get that working. Um, un I'm just going to unmute everybody. No, I don't want to unmute everybody. That could be very noisy. You basically have to unmute yourself, Paul, if you go in and click on it, but it says it's disabled. So, um, so it, that that was his question his um there was one a couple of other questions about that i think got answered in the chat around um this being a tech preview and when it would be available um and that's i think a, a roadmap i think 3.5 is still in tech preview i think 3.7 is coming out and it may be available on that but i'll double check that um and then there was a great conversation about, um, is there a UI available for all of this? And, and are, are we making one available for it from um, within OpenShift? And um, then that's always the great debate because people want to see the demos with the UI, but they actually use YAML or Ansible or something. So I think that was, I think they kind of quashed that whole conversation in the chat themselves. Um, so, uh, that was my question. Uh, and uh, if you can just throw some light on if that if a GUI is on the roadmap, or if that is not a planned entity at this point of time, that will help. Yes, Michael. Okay. Uh, so thank you for your question. Um, so I don't have actually the answer for the question. So we will have to contact uh, you know OpenShift team. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I don't think you guys are going to actually write it. I think it's going to be something that's got to come out of the engineering UI team, UX team at, at OpenShift, um, or the folks contributing to it. You're always welcome to contribute to something like that into the origin project as well. So you now I'll get upstreamed in if you have the time and energy. We'd love that. Um, let's see. I think that might be most all of the questions. I think it's going to be an interesting thing to see how people branch off, whether they end up using the Ingress or routes um, in, with OpenShift. And over time, probably it sounds like um, the extensions to Ingress will um, over maybe overtake the routes. Um, but we'll we'll see where that all goes. But other than that, I'm not seeing any other questions unless I'm missing someone. So you've got to. Then uh, I asked another question that if we can get the Prezo along with the video, if there ah. is a way if we can download this presentation somewhere. Yep, we I I, I will uh, um, get the presentation from uh, mm -hmm. Michael and add it into the blog post um, along with the video and the recording. So it'll, it'll all come as one package on blog.openshift.com. Okay, great. Cool. Thank you. All right, Michael, thank you very much for a very good job on um, the demo. And um, we're looking forward to when it comes out of Tech Preview, um, we'll have you back on again and, and we'll be seeing about if we can coerce someone into writing some semblance of a UI for this um, uh, from the OpenShift team or from the OpenShift origin community. Well, thanks, Diane. Uh, thanks for inviting us. And we're looking forward to you know, working with you again. Awesome. Thanks for coming. All right. Hope we'll see you all in Austin at KubeCon um, to talk about this some more um, or at the OpenShift Commons gathering the day before KubeCon in Austin on December 5th. And if you're interested in, in coming to the OpenShift Commons gathering the day before, reach out to me and I'll, I'll make sure you get, um, get invited. All right.
Thanks. Take care, guys.